stage one or HER2 positive breast cancer is a group of breast cancer that was really excluded from a lot of the pivotal adjuvant trials. You know, we didn't really know at the time when trastuzumab was being developed what the risk of stage one HER2 positive disease would be for patients. And so, you know, we do now, however, have a lot of data that has accumulated over the years from retrospective series of untreated patients that suggests that patients who have stage one HER2 positive breast cancer are at more than just an insignificant risk of recurrence with really rates of recurrence ranging um, as high as 30% in some series. And so, you know, knowing that these patients were at some risk, but maybe not as much risk as patients who had stage two or three cancers, there's been a lot of work that has been done to try and um, figure out what would the appropriate systemic therapy be for patients who have stage one HER2 positive disease, again, since they weren't included in the pivotal adjuvant trials. One of the first studies to do this was the APT trial, which looked at an abbreviated chemotherapy regimen with giving just 12 weeks of paclitaxel and trastuzumab, um, followed by nine months of trastuzumab alone to patients with stage one predominantly stage one HER2 positive tumors. And the trial found a really low event rate. So at uh, about seven years of follow-up, the recurrence-free interval was 97.5%, really suggesting there are very few distant recurrences that are occurring in patients who have you know, these smaller node negative HER2 positive cancers. And so while you know, Taxol and Herceptin has certainly been a standard that many have adopted for these patients. There's been a lot of interest in also seeing if we could even do a little better in terms of maintaining outstanding efficacy and keeping event rates low, but also trying to diminish toxicity. And so there was another trial uh, that our group had run called the ATTEMPT trial, which had randomized stage 1 HER2 positive patients to receive TDM1 for a year or to receive the TH regimen and this trial had found that a year of TDM1 was associated with a very low event rate. So the three-year invasive disease-free survival was about 98%. But the trial was also really designed to compare toxicities between the two arms. So it had another endpoint, which was comparing clinically relevant toxicities. And in fact, the total rate of these toxicities was the same in each arm. So there was really no difference um, in the overall number of clinically relevant toxicities. But I think the challenge with those data is there are different toxicities between the two arms that really do have different implications for patients. And so, you know, one finding is that certainly the taxol Herceptin was associated with more neurotoxicity, um, more infusion reactions, more alopecia, uh, whereas, for example, TDM1 has more early treatment discontinuations, more LFT um, elevations, more thrombocytopenia. And so I think, you know, seeing the good efficacy from TDM1 has led many to consider TDM1 in some select patients. Um, for example, a patient who may be concerned about neurotoxicity or has baseline neuropathy that may be a potentially good treatment option. But I think all that being said, we're still working towards trying to de-escalate therapy further for these patients. And there are other ongoing trials, including a trial called ATTEMPT 2.0, looking at a short course of TDM1, um, and then another trial called ADEPT, which is looking at no chemotherapy, in fact, just looking at dual HER2-directed therapy with endocrine therapy for stage one ER-positive, HER2-positive uh, tumor. So I think, again, there's been a lot of um, improvement in treatment um, for stage one disease, really allowing us to use TH or TDM1, uh, but a lot of work ahead of us to even try and de-escalate further.